Now for this last part, we've got to find the length of time for which the stone is at least six and three fifths meters above A. So let's just put that point A in. Let's just say that A is somewhere at that kind of level. Okay, so just mark that in there. Mark that as six and three fifths meters. So that's that distance from there back down to where A is. Now, as the stone is projected from A, obviously it's going to rise up into the air and back down again. And it's going to pass through this point here on the way up at some particular time. Let's say that time is T1. It's then going to be above six and three fifths meters for a certain time, come back down, and it's going to pass through this point again at another time, let's say T2. So in order to find the time that it's above six and three fifths meters, we just need to do T2 minus T1. Now, how do we get T2 and T1? Well, we've got to think about using a SUVAP based equation. So if we just take upwards as the positive sense in the usual way, the direction of the initial projection, we can put our values in, S, U, V, A and T. And what are they going to be? Well, S, the displacement from A, is going to be 6 and 3 fifths. Let's just mark that in as 6 and 3 fifths. I want to change that to a decimal. Okay, we'll have that as equaling 6.6, .6, okay? U, we know from the very first part of the question, was 17.5, so 17.5 meters per second upwards. V, the final velocity, well, not interested in that, okay? At these particular times, we don't really know what it is, so it's just got to be abandoned. Acceleration acts downwards, so that's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second per second. And the time t, well, that's what we're after, the time when it's 6.6 .6 meters then above A. Let's just put a question mark there, that's what we want. So what equation would we use? Well one that we're going to use that uses these results, leaves out V, has got to be S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So if we put in our values then, we're going to have for S 6.6, .6, so we've got 6.6 .6 equals, and then U, we know is 17.5, 17.5, So what have we got? We've got S, which is 6.6, .6, and that equals U times T, 17.5 T then, 17.5 T, plus a half, multiplied by A, which is minus 9.8, minus 9.8, times T squared. So we've got a quadratic equation. That's good because we can expect two answers for T, T1 and T2, to come out of this. If we can cancel the two into the minus 9.8, it's going to give us minus 5.9 T squared. So let's just do that now, okay? That goes into that, minus 4.9 T squared. Now if I rearrange this to make this term positive, I'm going to therefore have 4.9 T squared, Let's subtract the 17.5t, and then we've got plus 6.6, .6 and that equals zero. Now, I've got a feeling that this is going to factorize. It doesn't look great at the moment, okay? You could multiply it through by 10, get rid of these decimals. If I did do that, we're going to have, therefore, 49t squared, minus 175t plus 66 equals zero. Now you don't obviously have to do this, you could just find t by using the quadratic formula. If you do, let's just come over here, if you do do that, then t is going to equal, 
Remember the quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. a is the 4.9, b is the minus 17.5, c is the 6.6. .6. Or you could use a is 49, b is minus 175, c is 66. If you do do that and don't want to factorise this, then t is going to equal minus b. We'll work off this equation here. So t would equal minus b, so that'd be minus minus 175, so that'd be plus 175, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So that's going to be b squared minus 175. Make sure you put that in brackets and square it. Minus 4 times a, a being the 49, times c, c being the 66, all divided by 2a. So 2 times a, 2 times the 49. Now if you work this out, you get your two values for t. Let's call them t equaling t1, say. t1, the first value here will be the one that you get when you use this minus value. So if you work that out using the minus value, you should find you get 0.4285 and so on. Okay. If you work out the second value using the plus value, t turns out to be, let's call it t2, this time when it's on its way down. Do that, you find you get 3.1428 and so on. So to get the time that it's above here, you just need to do 3.1428 minus the 0.4285. Therefore, the time uh, above the six and three fifths, six, above six and three fifths meters equals the difference between these two values. 3.1428 and so on minus 0.4285 and so on. Just squeeze that in there. Hope you can see that. It's a bit small, I know. But uh, what does that come out to? It comes out to 2.7142 and so on. And if you were to say round that to one decimal place, 2.7 seconds. Now you didn't have to use the formula. This does factorise as it turns out. And if you did carry on factorising it in the usual way, a couple of brackets here equals zero, what you would have found that you would have got would have been 7t multiplied by 7t to give you the 49t squared. And then for the 66, it would have been minus 22 and minus 3. And the advantage with this is you get the exact value because we can put this factor equal to zero and if we did that we would end up with t equaling 22 sevenths or you could put 7t minus 3 equaling zero so you get that 7t would equal 3 you divide by 7 and you get t equals 3 sevenths so you can see you might want to check it out but 3 sevenths as a decimal is this value here and 22 sevenths is this time here. So when it comes to the time above six and three fifths meters, we could just subtract these two. So we would have therefore the time above six and two thirds, sorry, six and three fifths meters, okay, equals 22 sevenths minus the 3 sevenths and that turns out to be 19 sevenths seconds. So you've got either this decimal approach or the factorization approach. It's a bit cramped, um, I just wanted to keep it on the one screen though so uh, I hope you can see that. Um, but there you go, that's how I would approach that problem.